So I want to first uh, say hello to everyone. Um, we're almost there. I think we're missing just a few more participants before we get started. I hope everyone can hear me right. Um, so as we wait, I want to first go through the technical, technical, technical things right now of this webinar. So right now you can already see in the chat what uh, we propose. So right now, as you know, the webinar will be recorded. Um, after the recording, the video will be posted on the EFPC YouTube channel and also on the Service Center for Primary Care in Austria, their website as well. Um, it will be very nice of you if you can turn on your camera. Um, also, please be on mute for now during the presentation. And uh, if you can have your full name um, in the Zoom, Zoom, Zoom bar, so then we can also take notes of uh, the participants that are here. The reason for your full name is because um, you can receive a confirmation that you participated to, to this webinar. And later on, I think later on this week, you will receive a certificate for your participation. Uh, yeah, that's that's it for now. Let me see if we're missing a few more people. Don't think so. I don't see anyone joining or in the lobby. Okay, so uh, I say we can get started. So for now, um, I'll quickly introduce myself. Hi everyone. My name is Chris uh, Christopher uh, Van der Linden. I'm the EF EFPC Junior Coordinator. Um, a little background about myself: I I have I studied uh, health public health during my bachelor's and a little bit in my master's. I have a master's in healthcare policy right now, and I'm working together with the EFPC as a junior coordinator with uh, Diederik Arendonk, and uh, we make sure that we get these events happen happening. So as long as it starts happening and we get the conversation going about healthcare and primary care especially, we can uh, have a strong community and we can continue to promote better health for all. So that's a short introduction about myself. So this this webinar for today is part of the EFC webinar series. We have um, three webinars in the month of November. Today, this is the first one um, of the series in November specifically. And this webinar is uh, a collaboration between the EFPC, of course, and also the Service Center for Primary Care in Austria. So that's that's what we're doing today. And then I'll also give right now an introduction of the webinar that we're doing today. So today, the beginning of the 2022, the pilot project of the community nursing is, is a well-funded, is a, is a funded project by the European Commission, uh, specifically under the next generation EU, and is rolled out in all Austrian provinces. So around 120 projects are being realized to increase and strengthen the health literacy of the population and improve people's well-being through community nurses. This project specifically has a focus on providing elderly people to remain in their own homes while receiving the necessary care. Today, Elizabeth Rappold, head of the department long-term care at the Austrian National Public Health Institute and project coordinator, will present the background and general information on the community nursing project as well as opportunities and benefits of this healthcare concept. So in order to give information on the practical aspects today, uh, Julia Grabher uh, Schwanninger, uh, a community nurse at the city of Dornbirn, will give insights and her practical input as well at this webinar today. But for now, I will give the floor to Elizabeth. Yeah, thank you for the introduction and um, I will share my presentation with you. So, you should see the presentation? Yes. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you for the possibility to share our nursing experience with you within the next uh, few minutes. You see there are a lot of uh, organizations involved in this um, uh, project. 
We have it divided in two parts, background and conception, and Julia with Thornpin 1.0, so you get a bit of an insight in, in our practical aspect of the project. But before we start, we would like to do a small Slido questions with you, and I give the floor to Lisa for Slido. Yeah, hello. Um, you can scan the QR code or you can type in slido.com and type in the number and the passcode. passcode. And uh, we will start the sharing of the screen and the first question. So the first question um, is from which city are you? Um, as I can see, already two, four participants are typing. You can see also the QR code you can scan. And so you come directly to the question. So we start Vienna, Austrians, Florence, um, Netherlands. Um, a lot of from Vienna. <laughs> Feldbach, a lot of cities from Austria. Salzburg as well. So we just wait a little bit. Marburg, also very nice, Slovenia. More and more participants are joining, that's really nice. The link and the passcode is also uh, in the chat. Uh, also from Amsterdam, Netherlands, really nice. From Germany, oh. diversity cities, but mostly from Austria, <laughs> or Maastricht as well, and Reutlingen. Just wait 10 more seconds and then we can go to the next question. So most of the people are from Austria, but we're really happy um, to welcome people from the Netherlands and also Germany and Italy. So the next question is, um, have you heard about a community nursing project before? So especially from our international colleagues, okay, now of course, yes, <laughs> <laughs> but 6% no, yeah. Not sure. So already 50 people um, answered the question. So, okay, there are some here which are not sure and don't know the project. And the last question is, um, do you have a concept like 
health nurse, community health nurse in your country? Also, yes, and not sure. That's also really interesting. And some don't have one. So, but there are some people who don't have a concept and are not sure. So, thank you. The questions are still available, so you can fill it out um, as well during the presentation. So, thank you, Lisbeth. Yeah, thank you, Lisa. Thank you for this short. Um overview now you um, uh, need to share my screen so we are back with the presentation and i think what is important for you to know is how our long-term care system is organized in austria and how it's in the how um, the interaction with our acute care system is because uh, maybe you get a better insight in in some difficulties we face when it comes to community nursing what you see on, on, on this slide on your right-hand side is the area of long-term care with nursing homes, daycare centers, home services. And this is, um, uh, the reality is that the federal state uh, mainly provides long-term care benefiting cash for people with uh, um, care needs. And that the provinces are mainly responsible for service like nursing care, daycare centers, and also home service like um, home nursing, home care. And our project, you will see it is, is, is funded from the European Commission, is organized by the Ministry of Health and is located in our provinces. And that's a new idea and doesn't fit in our system we have in Austria so far. And the other thing you see on this slide is that on the acute care sector, where rehabilitation standards are, the hospitals, the outpatient facilities, we have shared responsibilities between the healthcare system, the Ministry of Social Affairs, Health Care and Consumer Protection, and the health insurance system, the, 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 the red dots here. And of course, there is this outpatient emergency care. And now we have a new service, which is not established in Austria and therefore it's not part of the existing system. And that's not so easy to manage and argue why it's needed and why it's something different. And it's also, the question is also open, where are we going from this point and where will the service be integrated in, in our Austrian system? But to the ballot projects now, uh, we already heard it's funded by the European Commission, by the Recovery and Resilience Facility, Next Generation European uh, EU. The responsibility for the administration of the projects on the national level is in the Federal Minister of Social Affairs, Healthcare and Consumer Protection, and they are also the link to the um, European Commission. But when it comes to the operational side of the project, the Austrian National Public Health Institute is on one hand um, responsible for the coordination, implementation and funding process, but also for all networking aspects, educational aspects for the reporting structure. So when it comes to the operational aspects of the project, it's the Austrian Public Health Institute which is involved. And because the project is a huge project, we have an external partner when it comes to the evaluation. It's the um, University of Applied Science in Carinthia. And the idea is to have a um, program driven evaluation. Um, so it's quite something new in Austria in our field in nursing and healthcare. And it's also something which needs to be discussed a lot and it is necessary to gain an understanding of what's the difference of this type of evaluation to other evaluation types we usually have when it comes to output and outcome. 
Yes, now to the pilot projects. Um, we have a funding um, around um, uh, 55, uh, 54.2 million euros. Uh, and the, we had a call for this project. We had 145 applications. And now we, de we decided because of the money and the, uh, um, the projects um, that 115 municipalities, cities or social welfare associations can be funded. And you can see it on, on, on this Austria card that we have projects from the western parts of Austria, where Dornpen is located, to the eastern part of Austria, um, to the border of Hungary. Um, eligible are cities, municipalities, and social welfare associations. And in order to make this happen, we had a huge work on the legal aspects of the foundations first, and we needed to change some laws in Austria. And that's something which takes time. We didn't expect uh, in uh, when we started that it takes that long. That's uh, the reason we, we are a little bit behind with our, our, our project. The target groups are all the people living at home with an imminent or existing need for information, counseling, care, or support, as well as the informal caregivers of these people and also people over the age of 75 before a possible need of care is existing. So we focus on health promotion and prevention. You can see the point nursing care reform. Um, actually, the nursing care system in Austria is facing a reform. It was announced in the government program 2020 to 2024. Yeah. And, um, the need for community nursing was included in this government program. And so we would have started with community nurses anyway. We started with more projects than we expected because of the funding of the European Union. When it comes to the introduction of new concepts in Austria, we often have the problem that we are using English terms. And it's not so easy to understand English concepts in German language because community, for example, doesn't exist in, in the same sense than it exists in, in, in English. So we try to differentiate and explain something um, in our, our, our uh, field that we need to differentiate community-based from community-oriented. Community-based is, uh, as we understand it, in the living environment people, they are various community oriented in the sense of providing care for a collective. And then we have this uh, concept of community care and community nursing. And when we Austrians are speaking with people from other countries, people often associate home care, care at home or nurses working uh, in the houses, in the flats of people as uh, uh, community nurses. And that's something we also have in Austria, and we call them in the German equivalent would be home care or mobile care services, where nurses go to the people in the household and um, make the wound management or diabetes care or something like this. And then we have internationally the concept of community health nursing as an advanced nursing practice. And that's something different because it's the consensus um, that community health nursing is a speciality in nursing with a special goal to protect and preserve the health of the members in its community and to focus on uh, self-care among individuals and families. And usually... Uh, you should have a master's degree in order to work as a community health nurse. So what we face in Austria is we are using English words. We don't know exactly what the concept behind the word is, but we use it anyway. When it comes to the um, uh, discussion on an international level, then I would say we with our community nursings are somewhere in between the classical home care and community health nursing because we focus on something different than uh, nurses working at home where the patients are living. 
but we are not so far established that we can say we are community health nurses because it's not a speciality in our nursing logic in Austria. Who are the community nurses? Our community nurses are registered nurses with two years uh, pre minimum of two years practice and if possible a specialty in community health care. As you can see, um, it's a very low level entrance in this field of working. When it comes to the scope of practice, uh, we, trans uh, we, we have a, a special paper and we try to implement the special pa paper in our project. Um, the scope of prep practice is to provide low threshold demand oriented population based care. And the new focus is on community level and with the, in the areas of prevention supporting and fostering health literacy and health promotion. And that's something totally different to working in a clinical setting or even in a nursing home, which is more, more focused on curative areas or uh, end of life care, palliative care. Also new is to identify and on a community level the unmet needs of the population and then to address them and engage in a discussion with politicians or other stakeholders in the area, in the community, and to change the system and to start with some new concepts, what are needed in, in, in the regions. And all the new in, in the field is this networking with other healthcare professionals, but also groups and organizations, and to maintain this network, to engage with each other and to have a common vision. And the nurses uh, need to do this and have time to do this. And that's also something new and different because you probably all know how nurse um, hospitals are functioning or nursing homes are functioning. You usually have an organization, it's running and you're going there and everything is organized for you. And community nurses need to start with this organization from zero and to interact with everyone and get to know everyone. Yes, and if they detect uh, unmet needs, uh, they try on an early stage to see what's the problem and try to start with some interventions so that people stay at home um, and stay healthy at home and that they get some competences in the area of health nursing literacy. And it's still a holistic approach because um, we have this biopsychosocial approach in the project that we see people in uh, as a whole holistic being and try to detect where are the problems. Is it more social problem? Is it a health problem? Problem and act accordingly. We have a theoretical background. This is the public health intervention wheel. It has um, it was developed in the US from the um, in health institute in Minnesota. It's also used in different other countries uh, in Iceland, for example, and Norway. And we have three different levels of aggregation in this public health intervention wheel. We have an, an, in the center, you see it here in the middle, the, in, uh, the individuum as uh, area of concern. Then we have the community and the system. And in the wedges, we have different areas where nurses should work. And I would like to show you some, not all of them, in our project, we focus on health promotion and disease prevention, and this is uh, necessary on an individual level, but also on the community level in order to strengthen the healthcare system and to cooperate over the different sectors. And we try to include, of course, the setting best approach so that health promotion in specific settings are really uh, starts to work and change some things like in residential areas. And we have some projects to also focus on schools. You know, the main problem is often that people are motivated to do something, but after the initial motivation, they lose the interest, they are not so focused, they are 
other important things they wanted to. So they lose the motivation to stay on the track. And it's important for us to come to this volition. And community nurses should support people when they start with the program, when they start with an interaction, to stay with the interaction. And that's also something which is extremely important in order to um, prevent chronic diseases, for example. So that's something, also something new for us as Austrians, because usually we get a, a medication and that's it. And the idea is that we as people should do something here and we get the support to stay on track. On a community level, the cooperation is something new and important, as I already mentioned it, and it's not um, just for fun, no, it has this goal that with the collaboration uh, with all those organizations, people and healthcare professions, we try to promote and protect the health of the community and to, to enhance the, the, the capacity and also to to start with some um, capacity building in the org, uh, in the community. And of course, if if nurses uh, start collect some information, you will hear, hear this from Dornbin. Uh, you get the information, the nurses will see where the problems are, where the lacks are, and then they can take the results speak with stakeholders, speak with politicians, and try to create new activities, engage the community in the creation of these activities so that the programs which are, um, are created become part of the community and uh, people see themselves as part that, that they did something and it's quite interesting for them to stick with these activities. Yeah, the project is running for some uh, months now. We started at the beginning of this year. Our projects have been uh, running since March. A lot of them started only in, in, in June this year. So we don't have a vast experience of uh, what is happening in the project, but what we already see is that the projects are hugely diverse. Uh, which is also quite surprising for us because we didn't expect uh, so many projects and uh, that huge amount of nurses working there because a lot of them are only working part-time. Um, we already see that the scope of practice was a good idea in the beginning, but we need to adapt it, of course. Um, a huge challenge is in, in, in the monitoring because we get a lot of monitoring reports. We need to aggregate them and come up with something we can need in order to transfer to the practice. And it's also the um, balance between the support of the Austrian Public Health Institute and the autonomy of the projects because each project has a, a certain structure and they are responsible for the project. On the other hand, we try to come up with an Austrian perspective in view and we need to give some in, um, uh, ideas and, and support the project, but we don't like to give too much uh, strategy or too much information or to be too strict. So that's uh, not so easy to detect what's the best to do. At the level of implementers, we gained some insights and one of the main problems is to address the target group because you can't get the addresses easily so you need to engage in in different activities in the community and the mindset of nursing is in Austria focused a little bit on the curative area and now it's prevention it's health promotion and that's something um, also the nurses need to change in the mindset and to do something different and do it differently than they did it in hospitals. And also um, the framework, this public health intervention wheel, uh, what has to be done and that it has to be done by the nurses themselves. There is no team in, in most cases and that they have time to do this. That's unfamiliar and also uh, I would say a challenge and therefore there is this fear of making mistakes. And the other thing is that uh, networking itself 
is um, important in the community, but it's really, really important between the projects because uh, nurses are learning a lot when interacting with each other. Yes, the project team, I have some pictures, but it's future. We have our colleagues from the funding department and there is some literature for you and that's the theoretical background. And now it's up to Julia to present the practical aspect. Yeah, thank you very much. Dear ladies and gentlemen, now we have the honor to share with you our experiences in the Community Nursing Project CN Dornben 1.0. My name is Julia Grapea Schwaninger and my colleague Manuela Wehinger. We are employed by the Office of the City of Dornben as Community Nurses. And in our presentation, we will first get uh, an overview of the project, then I will report about our activities and conclusions. And at the end, I will give you some information about the further actions planned. The next slide, Dornbirn. What's Dornbirn? <laughs> Where is Dornbirn? Dornbirn is a city in the province of Vorarlberg in Austria. Vorarlberg borders Germany, Liechtenstein and Switzerland. In Austria, the Tyrol and the Lake of Constance and the Alberg, maybe you know them both, are very close. The people of Dornbirn speak a very special dialect. You won't understand even if you know German. And uh, one of their national dishes are cash uh, Don't miss to try them when you're here. <laughs> Dornbirn has an area of about 121 square kilometers. There are more than 50,000 inhabitants with main residents and about 3,000 with secondary residents. There are also 124 different nations represented in Dornbirn. It's really an unbelievable number. The next slide. We have defined Shoren as the project region, the impact area in the funding request. Shoren is one of six districts in Dornbirn and has an area of about 11 square kilometers, about 6,000 inhabitants, and about 4,000 households. 80% have no Austrian citizenship, and 12% of the population are aged over 75. Our office is also located in Schoren, in the meeting point on the Arch. You here can see a photo of our headquarter. And therefore, both the best possible um, and beating of community nurses in the project region and optimal accessibility for the population is guaranteed. Um, the next slide, there are the fields of activity in our project, uh, health literacy and social participation. That means we are setting the focus on health promotion and prevention. Um, we want to support citizens in strengthening their health literacy and involving in activities that provide interaction with others in society or the community. So we pursue the idea of a positive, comprehensive and uh, then a dynamic concept of health orientated on the concept of salutogenesis. In our goals, we define that community nursing is accessible to all citizens in the shoring. All people in the Shoren fall within the scope of the community nurses. But when we submitted the project, we focus on following target groups. These are caring relatives, caring relatives, singles in transition to retirement and singles in old age, and citizens and their families with migration biographies. The next slide, please. Um, we do community nurses about me. I have a diploma in healthcare and nursing and have completed the Bachelor of Science in Nursing with specialization in management and public health and worked on various hospitals in Austria and Switzerland. And my colleague Manuela Wehinger has also the diploma for healthcare and nursing and was completed a course for intermediate and basic nursing management and worked on various routes in the hospital in Dornbirn. And we are both employed in the office of the city of Dornbirn. So the next slide, please. What are our project goals in the uh, project? First, concrete needs of the members of all target groups are collected, documented, and quantified. 
Then the citizen insurer are informed about potential for maintaining physical and mental health. And more than 50% of the citizens insurer know about community nursing. That's about 3,000 people. And more than 4% of the citizen insurer are in personal exchange with their community nurse at their own request that there are about 250 citizen contacts and more than 1% of the citizen perceive community nursing as beneficial for the daily life situation. Here we are talking about more than 60 person at the end of the project. Okay, the next slide, please. Um, we have created an illustration in which the distinction between the community nursing and case management and home nursing is made comprehensible. In the middle, you see the client. Then you can see home nursing. In Austria, qualified nursing working at home nursing, and they offer care in residential settings and in the case of illness and in need of care. Further, uh, you can see now case management. Um, the employed nurses, nurses in the case management department give individual, individual consultation in the case of illness and in need of care. And on the left side, now you can see community nursing. We are now there for clients without a case of illness, and we are responsible for caring family members in addition to their case of illness, because the family members are sometimes ill and, and there is no one who is looking to them. Finally, the Yellow House should draw attention to the fact that the community nurse considers the whole family and the whole environment of the client. It is supposed to represent this holistic approach Mrs. Rappold already talked about. Okay, then the next slide, please. Um, I want to give you a short overview of the project phases. Um, first, we started the project was a long preparation phase of almost uh, six months. And the testing phase with evaluation has, has just started in September now and will continue until March. And finally, the realization phase with evaluation lasts from March 2023 until the end, December 2023. 24. Okay. In the next three slides, I would like to present our most important project activities that have been identified so far as a kickoff event, a project meeting with 223 participants, which, which had already been organized in, in, in advance, uh, was held in, in March in the Dornbrin City Library. Then uh, a series of events and training were visited from us and more than 80 network partners could be uh, reached with, with a personal presentation in which the most important goals and activities of the project um, were presented. And since the project has begun, we community nurses have made more than 300 personal or telephone contacts with system partners in the region. Okay. And uh, then furthermore, we have created a visualized overview of the offers provided in the social sector and healthcare service in Dornbirn. We have organized regular meetings with all active community nursing project participants in Vorarlberg and other federal states, IG the Tyrol, and we meet here once a month with the others community with, with the other community nursing in uh, Vorarlberg to benefit from each other's key experiences and and really to pull together. And then we have analyzed the district shoring with data material and information, and we have divided the shoring into twelve community nursing districts with public meeting points and network partners. Uh, furthermore, we have made nine windshield surveys and walking surveys. And here you can see a picture of my colleagues and my feet taken during one of those tours. So, and furthermore, 
some activities, uh, focus group interviews and individual interviews have been and are still made. It was really interesting because these interviews, um, not everybody wanted to be willing to provide information in the group. And so we changed and made uh, individual interviews too. Um, then specialist groups and temporary working groups have been formed. Then newsletter have been edited. A monthly newsletter with uh, a monthly newsletter will be sent to all interested persons and uh, network partners. And furthermore, a community nursing section on the city of Dornbrenn website has been created. In order to be present and visible, the community nurses are present regularly every week at nine spots in Shoren. Um, this is a really good possibility to get in touch with the citizen in a very low threshold way. Okay, and our conclusion, what do we think about the activities taken so far? It was really important for us to, see, to, to set the first sign with our kickoff event in the library immediately after the announcement of the project start to attract attention. Then the long preparation phases may be a key factor for success. It gave us the time to collect the necessary knowledge and experiences, and that has given and gives us security. And a learning compass with existing offers is very helpful for getting a deeper insight of our system partners. And the most important thing we're getting to know the existing network and system partners and fitting in so the synergy potentials are realized and duplications are avoided. Uh, windshield and walking surveys are, very, are a very good possibility to get in contact with the people also in a low threshold way. And the addressees must be involved as experts from the very beginning. And the resource-oriented first contacts can be useful for good accessibility. And further interviews must follow, if necessary, primarily oriented to problematic situations. Um, drawbacks, as a drawbacks in the, in the first contact can be questionnaires and documents that have to be filled out or read, signatures that have to be provided. This sketch could inhibit the necessary trust building. And during the first conversations, as informal as possible, an emerging feeling of trust is prob probably the most important criterion for reaching people in the best possible way. And according to the interviews with the focus participants, this trust arises through listening, empathy, experiences, expertise, and also through visits that take place close to each other. Yes. And what are now the further ideas for reaching the citizens? Consideration of the different preferences, values, and moral attitudes. Then opening specialist groups step by step, and finally forming working groups. Okay. Yeah, I hope you you have gained a few impressions of our everyday work now, and uh, now I would give you a very brief overview of the further actions planned. These are, for example, working with the target groups will be identified with a focus on trust building and has promoting workshops and lectures and pre-testing 13 home visits with evaluation in December. We are preparing them now. And meetings for members of the target groups will be organized. And the official home visits will be conducted starting in March 2023. And further community nursing offers will be tested and potential standard instruments will be created, documentation and so on. And now with some impressions, I want to thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. <laughs> okay. 
Thank you, uh, Julia and Elizabeth, for the presentation. I think it was very informative and um, very detailed on how the project and how is it going right now and the future as expectations that you uh, have. Um, so now we move on to the to the discussion section of this webinar. So some some quick technical things. So if you have any questions, um, you can a raise your hand on Zoom or B, you can uh, write down your question in the chat. Uh, Lisa will help me with the with the questions as well. Um, you can direct your question to either Julia or Elizabeth about um, their presentation. The question could be in English and in German, and then we will also have our uh, have Lisa translate the questions if there are if they are in German. So yeah, um, any questions? Uh, yes, uh, Elena, you can uh, unmute yourself. Yeah. Hi, ich stelle die Frage auf Deutsch, wenn es okay ist. <laughs> um, yeah, Lisa will translate then later. Thank you. Uh, ich komme aus, aus Deutschland und uh, bei uns ist ja Community Health Nursing uh, im Moment Thema. Und meine Frage wäre, warum Sie sich gegen um, die Masterqualifikation im Projekt entschieden haben. Also warum die uh, Nurses quasi nur Examen bzw. bei Ihnen das Diplom und Berufserfahrung brauchen. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> the question from Elena is, why the community nurses are having a diploma level and not a master level? Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank yeah, you. thank you for the question is something we get quite often and I can say to you it's a compromise because in the governmental program it is stated that community nurses will be established within the European, uh, European, sorry, <laughs> Austrian region, of course. And if we uh, need a master degree beforehand, then the period is too long to um, educate. And now we have um, roughly 300 nurses working in, in this field and to educate 300 nurses beforehand would mean um, an education of two years and uh, uh, the project is only funded till 2024 so we would have spent all the time in the education of the nurses and that is why we say it's not community health nursing it's a step before community health nursing and we have a lot of trainings on the job so on the one hand, uh, um, the Austrian Public Health Institute provides um, with different uh, types of training where we engage with the nurses in the federal provinces, where we support them with documents. We have a bi-weekly uh, bi um, virtual um, uh, webinar we have different other areas of concern uh, we learn a lot of from the project where they need to be supported so we try to support them but it's not idle i agree with you but i think um, it was very important for the government that something is happening in um, in the municipalities because we have a um, lack of nurses in austria we also suffer from um hospital beds and um, beds in nursing home which are closed due to the lack of nurses and it's a huge effort now to focus on health promotion and prevention and so that's just one step in this direction even though um, it's a different way than other countries are doing it okay i hope that was uh, clear um we have we actually have uh two questions in the chat as well from Lily. So the first question will be to Elizabeth. And it is, uh, what are the main difficulties in implementing the project in general or and for each? In general, one of the main problems uh, we see is that it's uh, the, the, the beginning um, in the pilot areas, uh, is a, it's a rolling process, not every project starts at the same point. So with our trainings, we started in, in spring this year. 
and some projects only started in October. So we, we recreate our trainings. We need to support projects on different levels all the time. So that's one of the main projects. Also a uh, problem, sorry, and also um, the rules and regulations from the European Commission a bit confusing because in in the beginning it was not so it it, it looked with little um, with little problems and it's easy to 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 manage and with the time being more and more and more um, information. Um, has been given by the European Union and they need more proof of this and proof of that and now we are uh, creating lists and documents in order to send them to the European Commission so it's, it, that's also a problem in this special project. Okay um, and then the other question is directed for Julia. Uh, could you please tell, tell more about the planning of the focus group? So how many people are in it? How did you recruit them? Okay. Um, yes, it was um, not so difficult for us to, rec to recruit the participants because before we have done the network, network, uh, network meetings with all system partners. And so we have had a good uh, opportunity to ask them, either they, they know someone of the target groups and we have um, um, developed um, three target group specific interview guides and we're asking them during the, the interview and yes and the answer was recorded and, and, and trans transcribed and it, it, it was really interesting because the, the people liked it very much it, there were only maybe 10, 10 people in the group and they are talking and talking and talking and talking and wanted to do it again and, and it was really a good idea and it there was so much information that we are thinking about that we are yeah we are making more focus groups interviews but but maybe uh, in, a, in a smaller smaller group and yeah and it, I don't know the question anymore. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think you answered. Uh, if you have other, other question, you can write me an email. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, uh, let me see. We have one other question from Jos van Dorst. What if a family has multi problems? Who is who is coordinating the care needed? Well, if, if the community nurse identified this problem, that it's a problem for a social worker, for example, for psychologist, then it's the, the community nurse who identifies the problem and supports the client to go to the right um, profession and also gets the information where to find uh, the profession, get the number, maybe if necessary to organize uh, the first interaction with this profession. And then it depends uh, on the regional um, support structure because it's different in Austria, every region, every uh, federal state has a different system. In general, we have the same, but it's differently organized in every federal state. So it can happen that, for example, in Vienna, the supporting system is different to the supporting system in Syria. And therefore they need to identify locally what, what exists and then they are uh, directing the people in the right direction. Um, when it comes, for example, that they are in need of a, a nursing home or um, mobile care support, then they uh, appoint to the right direction and it's up to the client to organize everything for him. And we also had case and care managers, for example, in different areas in Austria, and they usually support the client in getting the right um, care. Okay. And Jos has, Jos has also a second question. Are there methods used to assess the needs and setting healthcare goals? 
Yes, we have um, assessment instruments, uh, various types of assessment instrument where the, uh, which the nurses can use and identify the problems. Um, we have um, uh, we did the research beforehand and they are available on, on our project homepage. Okay, that's uh, good. Um, let me see, are there any other questions in the in the room maybe? that I'm missing. No, uh, maybe just one question for me then is, uh, is there feedback on the cooperation with other health and social in institutions? On the project? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, of course, at, at the beginning, uh, not only in the beginning, still till now, there are some concerns, um, uh, for example, in the federal Congress, because there are case and care management um, groups and uh, the federal countries are providing uh, some aspects of community nursing and there is the fear that structures are doubled. And uh, therefore it is an um, enormous effort to um, speak to each other, to network on a national level, to engage also the um, stakeholders on, on, uh, from the federal countries and to adopt the project and to look for uh, uh, synergy effects and uh, not the double structure. But it's, I think I'm safe to say that not everyone in Austria is happy with the broker. Okay. Um, and then I'll just grab this last question and then uh, we'll close the session. Um, so from Evelyn Klopf, um, is, it, is it planned to integrate A and P in this project? Uh, advanced nurse practitioner, it, um, well, we, we focus on, on, on people who are not suffering from a chronic disease or something like this. So, uh, it's not the main focus in the project, but if, uh, for example, um, a team member has an AMP degree in, in a specialty, then it's an advantage, but we are not focusing on certain client groups at this stage of the program, but we hope that we can um, go in a specialty area in our nursing law with community health nursing and then have AMPs integrated. Okay, um, then I would like to thank everyone for their, their um, for being here today. Um, thank you, especially to Julia and Elizabeth for, for being here and giving a very excellent webinar. I just have some final quick, quick notes to share. So as I already said uh, earlier, this is part of the uh, EFPC webinar series. Let me quickly share my screen. So, um, so of course, today's webinar series, um, we got to hear about this project. Um, you can find more information um, at the website. You can also email um, Julia and um, Elizabeth later, um, but here are their information. Um, we will send this information out to you as well. So then the conversation, conversation can continue after this webinar. Uh, don't forget that this is recorded. So both the videos will be on our website, on the U EFPC YouTube channel, and at the Service Center Primary Care in Austria, their website as well. And then uh, for next week, 16th of November, we have uh, another series, a webinar series. This is um, focusing on exemplar practices for students' mental health. This will be given by Maria Papatakaki and Christian uh, Vashta. Um, they will explain about their, their projects and how they've been evaluating like student mental health is specifically at university. So don't forget to sign up if you can next week. It will be between uh, next week, 16th of November, between two and three. Hopefully most of you can make it. Um, and then lastly, I want to share just um, that the EFBC will be having its conference next year um, in, in Istanbul, Turkey. And the focus of this, this uh, conference will be on international humanitarian crisis. Um, more specifically, what is the role of primary care in, for international social cohesion? So more information will follow up. 
but um, for now, just be aware. You can save it in your agenda if you can, or note it down somewhere that on September 3rd, between September 3rd and 5th in 2023, we will have a conference. Um, that's everything that I'm supposed to share. <laughs> so then I would like to thank everyone for, for being here and for joining us today. Um, we noted down your names and, um, and, and uh, participants, so you will receive a certificate later on via email this week or next week, preferably, I think. Um, but we will aim for this week. Um, but thank you all for coming today. And then I would like to wish you all a good day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye.